Hi, I'm Dr. William Song from Omni Aesthetics, and today I am going to go over our body contouring treatments, and I'm going to go over both non-invasive and minimally invasive treatments. So let's start with the non-invasive treatments. You've probably heard of cool sculpting, and this is one of the most popular non-invasive body contouring treatments in the world. So we'll spend a little time on cool sculpting. But before we do that, I just want to also let you know that we have other modalities of non-invasive body contouring, which include sculpture, which uses laser for melting the fat permanently. And there's also treatments like body effects, which are using radio frequency and true scope flex, uh, which uses um, energy to sculpt the muscles. So these are all treatments that we do offer at Omni Aesthetics. As far as which treatment is best for you is really determined by what we're trying to achieve. And as I mentioned before, Cool sculpting is the most common treatment that we do with that, that is minimally or non invasive. And the reason is because cool sculpting works. And as opposed to some of the other treatments, cool sculpting is relatively painless and the results are consistent. So that's why we love the cool sculpting so much. But sculpture is a great treatment for the people who don't have a lot of fat to grab, especially the more athletic types when we're trying to fine tune the melting of the fat, we can use laser treatments like sculpture and we can also do mus muscle toning. The True Sculpt Flex is a great treatment for toning that muscle after we remove the fat. You may have heard of some other devices similar to it, like the M Sculpt, but we like the True Sculpt because it is a more powerful device and we feel that it gives us better results. Radio frequency treatments like Body FX are great for um, spot reduction. The radio frequency treatments um, tend to be less permanent, so it, although it is a great tool, um, we like to use the more permanent treatments. So then, there, then we also have the minimally invasive procedures and these are the liposuction treatments that we do here at Omni. We don't do any treatments that require general anesthesia or putting you out. So everything that we'll be talking about today will be outpatient procedures done under local anesthesia. So we perform liposuction and we can do it um, regular liposuction by sucking out the fat using a cannula and tumescent anesthesia. But we also have energy assisted liposuction such as smart lipo, vasor liposuction and skin tightening treatments like Renuvion. But before we get into all that, I just want to talk about what you will need to do to maximize your results. So I know this is probably what, not what you want to hear if you're thinking about um, getting fat reduction treatments, but diet and exercise is going, are going to play a crucial role in how good your results are going to be. So whether we're talking about non-invasive treatments like cool sculpting or minimally invasive treatments like our liposuction, you need to understand that these procedures are not a substitute for a healthy lifestyle. If you have a procedure and you fail to maintain your rates, weight, your results will not last. And that's just the, the truth. And I want to get that out to you right away um, before you um, 
spend your money getting these treatments, you have to play your part as well. If you think that you can just get the fat sucked out and eat whatever you want and not exercise, then you are wasting your money. So don't even bother. But if you need some help, um, that's what these treatments are here for. Okay. And your best results are going to be if you combine the procedures that I'll be talking about with a healthy lifestyle um, and changes to give you the optimal results. So let's start with cool sculpting. Cool sculpting is a form of cryolipolysis. That means we are going to be freezing the fat cells in your body and that's how we're going to destroy the fat cells and we're going to destroy the fat cells so that they're permanently eliminated in the areas that are treated and the cool sculpting is a brand of cryolipolysis now in the United States the brand cool sculpting is the only FDA cleared device for cryolipolysis. There are other devices available overseas and there are some unapproved devices that are offered in this country. But there's a reason why cool sculpting is the only FDA cleared device and the reason why um, it is so popular is simply that it works. I've looked into some of the other devices and um, the imitation devices that are available overseas, they really do not compare to the cool sculpting device that we have in the United States. So I would say don't even bother with the other devices because they simply are not going to give you the results. And there are some complications that can occur with counterfeit devices. So with the cool sculpting, the technique is critical for getting great results. So you can't just, even if you have the genuine device and you're using it, if the technician is not properly trained and they don't know what they're doing, your results are going to be suboptimal and it is a shame when I hear people saying that cool sculpting does does not work because we do cool sculpting all day long and we get great great results and I attribute that mostly to the training that our technician the training and expertise that our cool sculpting technician has developed over the years and the way that cool sculpting works is that the fat is frozen inside your body without damaging your skin and using the proper massage technique and we also use acoustic wave to pulverize those frozen fat. The frozen fat cells are crystallized and when they're crushed while they're frozen those fat cells are destroyed. If they're not properly destroyed while they're frozen they can come back and they can come back with a vengeance. So why is cool sculpting so much better than some of the other non-invasive treatments? Well, as I mentioned before, we've tried them all and we just found that the cool sculpting works better than the other treatments. And some of the other treatments can actually be quite painful even though they are non-invasive. And cool sculpting also has the most research and data available. So we feel very confident in the safety and the efficacy of this treatment because it, is, it has been performed so many times on, on so many people safely with great results. Now let's compare cool sculpting to liposuction. Why would you get cool sculpting versus liposuction? Well, the obvious answer to that is that cool sculpting is non-invasive, which means there's no holes that 
need to be made in your body that you don't have to actually go inside and suck it out it's um, the downtime is very minimal you can go back to your normal activities you don't have to um, take a day off from work after you get your treatment and um, and it's very convenient the cool sculpting treatments can be done you can spend a whole day getting cool sculpted or you can do it a little bit at a time you can have a couple of cycles here and there and eventually um, slim your body down over time the downside of cool sculpting versus getting a liposuction or a surgical procedure is that the cool sculpting because it is non-invasive it can be less precise and it will take a lot of treatments to get results similar to liposuction and you may never actually get the same type of contouring that you can get with high definition liposuction and we are not able to perform the subdermal skin tightening that we can do with liposuction and there are some risks and complications that are specific to uh, to this cool sculpting treatment and most notably is PAH paradoxical adipose hyperplasia which I'll be talking about in a little more detail and neuropathy which is um, pain that develops after the treatment so what is PAH? PAH stands for paradoxical adipose hyperplasia and this is a rare complication that has um, made the news recently because of a supermodel who is actually uh, has brought a lawsuit against cool sculpting after she developed PAH and what PAH is is the area that's treated with cool sculpting can actually get bigger and that's why it's called paradoxical because you want it to get shrink and get smaller but the fat cells can actually get bigger after the treatment and this is a complication that's it's a known complication and it's very rare and the reason why the model is suing cool sculpting is because the clinic where she had the procedure performed never told her or allegedly never told her that she could develop PAH and she did so um, that's that's the most uh, uh, significant thing that um, you need to be aware of the other thing that can happen with co sculpting is the neuropathic pain which can occur weeks later and basically what happens in this is that the treatment irritates the nerve endings and as the nerve endings start to heal they cause a lot of pain and the pain can be quite significant and sometimes require prescription medications to treat fortunately it's usually not permanent and the pain goes away but it could last for weeks the other uh, complications that can occur with cool sculpting are cosmetic like irregularities ledging and shark bites are are typically caused because the applicators are um, not put on diligently because you there is an art to how the applicators are are placed so that you get the smooth results otherwise you can get ledges and you can get what actually looks like shark bites because you get a depression in the area that's treated and then the fat around it is still big um, so that's again why it's so important so important that your technician knows what they're doing and um, you can also uh, with any non-invasive treatments um, it's it's not as predictable um, you may not some people may just not get any results um, even though they get the treatments and if it's done pr properly again 
um, it's rare because most people will get results. Now, how much result you get will depend also on how many cycles of treatment that you get. So when you grab the fat with the applicator, it destroys about 20% of the fat that's, uh, that's sucked into the machine. So it's not getting rid of all the fat. It's getting rid of about 20% of the fat that it grabs. So you, um, to get rid of more fat, you may need to do extra treatments. So if you do enough treatments, you can definitely get results similar to liposuction, but it may actually end up costing you more than getting liposuction. So these are things that you need to discuss with your clinician before deciding which treatment that you want to get. Now, cool sculpting versus the other non-invasive treatments. Um, the other uh, treatment that comes closest to co-sculpting is the sculpture which is a laser and this one works and I've had it done on myself and I can tell you that it does work but it is painful so um, so that's the biggest down uh, side of getting the laser non-invasive treatment and there are other treatments using radio frequency energy. Most of them, even though they say they're permanent, I find that they tend to be more temporary. Um, there's also cavitation ultrasound, using ultrasound to, to blast holes in the fat. And this treatment is also very painful and not as precise, so it's not as commonly done. Now, there are some low-level laser and LED light treatments that can reduce the fat. These treatments work by opening up the pores on the fat cells and letting the fat leak out of the cells. They don't actually destroy the fat, so it's more like losing weight. The fat cells get smaller, um, but if you uh, don't maintain your weight, those fat cells will get bigger again. So this treatment is temporary. So these uh, laser light treatments for fat reduction are great treatments if you want a kickstart in your weight loss or you want a quick temporary reduction in your fat, but the fat does tend to come back. So now let's talk about liposuction. So traditional liposuction was done in the hospital in the operating room under general anesthesia. The way that it worked was they used to take these cannulas which had sharp edges and they, the original liposuction technique was pretty brutal. And um, I was doing, I was in my residency when the liposuction um, original liposuctions were being done and there were a lot of complications because they were basically cutting out the fat with a um, with a t with a sharp tube they were taking cores of fat and just removing it so you can imagine there was a lot of bleeding a lot of pain and um, people um, actually it, it was a very dangerous treatment to be performed and um, so so that was the vision of liposuction when it was first started and, and fortunately things have changed significantly since then we use blunt cannulas which are not sharp so there's less bleeding um, but if you're doing straight liposuction it's difficult to do it in, under local anesthesia because it takes a long time to suck out all that fat and, and a lot of work. So it's easier for the surgeon if the patient is under. Um, with the traditional liposuction, there tends to be more downtime, more bleeding and, and bruising. And because you're under general anesthesia and you're not moving, 
there's the risk of developing blood clots, that's the DVTs, which is a risk with any procedure that's performed under general anesthesia. When it's done under local anesthesia, you're awake, so you're going to be shifting your body around, so there's less risk of blood clots developing during the procedure. And um, with the general anesthesia, uh, and traditional liposuction, there tends to be more bleeding because there's less coagulation that occurs um, because with the energy devices, it does help stop some of the bleeding. And finally, with the traditional liposuction, it's difficult to get high definition doing traditional liposuction without any assistance from energy devices. So, so this way of doing my, uh, liposuction is good for just removing a small amount of fat, but it's really an antiqu uh, a, um, a treatment that um, is going out of fashion because we have much better ways to perform liposuction now. So the le energy assisted liposuction. Um, to talk about that, we must first discuss the smart lipo. Smart lipo is a laser-assisted liposuction, and, um, and this is really the device that took liposuction out of the operating room, out of the hospital, and into a outpatient setting, because this, the laser, the smart lipo laser, allowed the surgeon to pre-melt the fat. You can use tumescent anesthesia, which means that we put anesthesia in using, um, using a fluid that contains lidocaine um, for numbing. And after you numb the area, you can go in with the laser and pre-melt the fat. And that allows us to suck out the fat with smaller uh, smaller tools, smaller cannulas, so that you can actually do this as an outpatient. And that's really revolutionized the liposuction procedure and made it much more of a common everyday procedure as opposed to a radical treatment requiring months and months of downtime. So, so now liposuction is pretty much performed as an outpatient procedure. The, um, the laser also helped to tighten the skin. So we were able to do more, take out more fat with less skin hanging after the treatment. And then there's less downtime with these laser assisted liposuction. So that, that was really a great, um, great invention, and I used the smart lipo device for many years before switching to, um, to more modern techniques. So the other innovations are the power-assisted liposuction. So, um, so there, there are different devices that use mainly vibration to speed up the suction process. So typically, um, when we're doing, when we're re actually removing the fat, we, whether we pre-melt the fat or not, we still need to go back and forth rapidly to, uh, to get the fat out um, with the cannula. So, um, Doing it manually was like using a handsaw, whereas using a power-assisted device that uses vibration is like using a power saw. So it makes the process much faster and it allows uh, more sculpting to be done. So some of the devices that are available are the Power X and the Tickle LiPo, which I've used, but the um, but the gold standard is really the micro air, which we're using now. And uh, this is a device that uses a vibration 
and it's a very sturdy device that, that allows us to actually sculpt and rapidly remove the fat. So, so these are uh, devices that are um, being used now to perform liposuction both inpatient and outpatient and allows us to get more definition. But this is a device that has really changed my practice, the Vaser liposuction. Vaser is ultrasound technology. So, so you can't, it's a supersonic uh, vibration that occurs um, on these rods. So you put a little probe in and the probe is inserted prior to sucking the fat out. And the ultrasound actually con creates controlled heat, which literally breaks the fat apart and turns it into a liquefied fat. And it's much more precise and it's safer than the laser. When we use the laser, the laser kind of shoots out and um, it could just, you know, it'll go after anything that's in its path. Whereas the vaser, is um, is not going to go past where it's touching and it is more specific for fat tissue uh, um, so it's less likely to burn muscle and skin although that could still occur um, it's it's a much safer device and it allows pre-melting of the fat and tightening of the skin and sculpting um, and finally, the vasered fat is not burnt like the uh, lasered fat, so that you can act, these fat cells are still viable, so you can actually use it for doing fat transfer to the body. And it's a great uh, combining this with the power assisted and skin tightening treatments will give, help us give the ultimate result for outpatient liposuction. So the, finally, the tool that we use to finish off um, these treatments are subdermal, subdermal skin tightening treatments. So there, there are many devices that are out there. And as I mentioned before, the, um, the smart lipo and even the vaser will create some skin tightening. And that's all you need for most people, but if somebody has significant skin laxity or if we're removing a lot of fat, we do need to get some robust skin tightening and we need to do it from underneath to get the best results. So some of the devices that are out there, uh, devices like Skin Tight and Thermi use radio frequency energy to tighten the skin the smart lipo and other laser devices can use laser energy to tighten the skin from inside. Um, you can also tighten from outside using RF microneedling and that's a process where we put little tiny needles through the skin and then inject the laser energy deep into the skin and um, some of the devices that can be used to do this are devices like the Morpheus or the Silfirm X. I like the Silfirm X because there's a lot, it has a lot more versatility. Um, but my favorite skin tightening treatment and the one that's generally regarded as the best skin tightening treatment is the Renuvion, also known as J Plasma. This is a unique device that allows us to use radio frequency energy to convert helium gas into helium plasma. And the helium plasma tight, uh, heats and then supercools at the same time so that the energy can tighten the skin from inside and um, it is very safe, much safer than using a laser um, to tighten the skin. And it's made by a company called Bovi. And Bovi is a company that has been in the surgical arena for decades. They make the devices that surgeons use 
to cauterize the blood vessels as they're doing surgery to stop the bleeding. And in fact, the renewed concept of J-plasma and Renuvion came about because as surgeons were using this radio frequency and helium gas to coagulate blood vessels, they saw it. they can actually see tightening of the tissue around the area that's being treated. And somebody decided that, hey, why can't we use this actually as a skin tightening treatment? And that's what they did. And that's how they came up with the J-plasma, which was later renamed the Renuvion. So this, in combination with the Vaser or Smart Lipo and Power Assisted Liposuction has really changed the game in how we perform liposuction. And again, um, Renuvion is uh, what we were just talking about. And then because of these devices that are not now available that can help us perform liposuction, the, the, the game really has changed and it's, the expectations are much higher. Before, when we used to do liposuction, if we can just reduce the fat and make people look better in their clothes, um, and that was considered a successful liposuction. If we can take a person who has big rolls of fat and make it smaller rolls of fat so that it's not bulging out through the clothes, that was considered great liposuction. But now we can do that without doing liposuction. We can do that with cool sculpting. We don't actually need liposuction to just reduce and debulk the fat. Now the expectation is to actually sculpt the body, give, the, give you the curves, and even the definition, the six-pack abs that, um, that people are looking at on their Instagrams and social media. So high-definition liposuction is what is really... Um, the new age of liposuction. High def liposuction is a specialized technique pioneered by Dr. Alfredo Hoyos in, in Bogota, Colombia. And he started doing these procedures. And um, the interesting thing about what he was doing is that he was not operating on fat people. He was taking people who were already fit and making them look so much more athletic with cut with cuts in their muscles and 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 just the curves that uh, that people did not that nobody knew was possible um, he turned it into an art form so now high definition liposuction is gaining popularity and there are doctors like myself who have been trained by Dr. Hoyos, and um, we are performing high-definition liposuction. Most of doctors performing high-def lipo are doing it under general anesthesia, um, but I've been doing liposuction under local anesthesia for years, so, um, so I took that high-def con uh, concept and I kept it with the local anesthesia. So I'm one of the few doctors um, around the country that actually do high def lipo with local anesthesia. So, so we can do it in an outpatient setting and I typically do it in multiple sessions because if you're doing a whole body high def liposuction, that's a pretty intense procedure and you probably wanna be out. For that but I think it's much safer if you do it in stages do it in multiple sessions as an outpatient we can still get great results and uh, and make it a safer procedure so the way we perform high def lipo is by using the vaser liposuction combine that with power assisted 
liposuction and if needed we can use the Renuvion to tighten the skin and get great results. We can etch those abs, define muscle lines and, um, and get some, some fantastic results. So who is a good candidate for liposuction? Any type of liposuction. First of all, you want to be in good health. If you're not in good health, then this, this is not a procedure for you because this is a, an elective procedure. It's, it's not medically necessary. It's purely cosmetic. So if you're not in optimal health, you should not be getting these type of procedures because um, it's not going to cure anything. It's just going to make you look better. Um, so why risk your life if you're in, if your health is not good? Okay, so, um, so get your, yourself healthy. Um, and when you're a good candidate for the treatment, we'd be happy to do the treatment on you. But we're not looking to, um, to cause anybody any harm by doing this procedure on somebody who's not um, optimized for it. Okay, so mainly your liver and kidneys must be functioning normally to eliminate waste because you need to be able to get rid of the numbing, the lidocaine. Your blood pressure, blood sugar, they all need to be well controlled. If your, your sugar is not well controlled, you're not going to heal well, okay? And um, you can't have any active cancer or infection when you're getting the treatment because it can spread, okay? And no active heart disease. If you have a heart condition, that needs to be corrected and you need to be stable before we can even think about doing any of these treatments. So uh, we're gonna require that you get a recent blood work. And if you're over 40, we um, would like you to get a medical clearance from your doctor and um, finally, body contouring is not recommended for obese patients, okay? And that, that sounds kind of contrary, but if you're obese, then you don't want to, you know, the liposuction is really not going to help you. You need to lose the weight or even consider by, um, gastric bypass or, or balloon type of, of procedure to, um, to help you get rid of that extra weight because we're not going to be able to get rid of the fat that's, in your, that's surrounding your intestine. That's what's called visceral fat. We're only going after the subcutaneous fat, which means the fat is, that is under the skin but above your muscles. So, um, so that's why we want to evaluate you and make sure you're a good candidate because number one, we don't want to cause you any harm and number two, we don't want you to waste your money and not get great results, okay? So um, part of the secret of how we get such great results is that we do, uh, we are pretty picky about who we do the procedure on. So um, just something to be aware of. And now it's time to talk about the possible complications of liposuction. So as with any invasive procedure, uh, there's always risk of infection. So that's why we don't want you to have any kind of skin lesions or active infections um, because if we open you up, even though it's a, it's a tiny opening, um, if you have an active infection, it could get inside and we certainly don't want that to happen. And um, some of the uh, things that can happen are things like seromas and hematomas. Basically, seroma is a collection of fluid and hematoma is a collection of blood that can occur under the skin. And these are uh, things that, I mean, I haven't really seen much of these happening with the type of liposuction we do, 
Um, but um, some doctors um, find that it's pretty common to get seromas and hematomas. And if you do get, get one or more, um, you can drain it with a needle, and that's how we typically treat it. But sometimes um, it will require a surgical um, drainage to get rid of these. But fortunately, they're pretty rare. Um, bruising, although it's much less than it used to be, you can still get bruising, um, even with the uh, energy-assisted devices that we use. And bruising is expected. And um, bruising will occur because there's some little blood vessels that get ruptured while we're doing the procedure. Now, there's also going to be some soreness and pain after the procedure and it's um, it could last for a couple of weeks but every day it will get better the first night is probably going to be worse and sometimes you may need some painkillers but usually Tylenol extra strength Tylenol is enough um, swelling and edema can occur and that's also expected so some people may actually look a little bigger than when they went in because of the swelling, but that should all go down within a couple of weeks. And uh, it could take up to six months for you to get the final results, but you should start to look, you should start to see results after two weeks. Irregularities can occur, um, whether it's invasive or non-invasive. Um, again, it is an art form. Okay, so it has to be done um, with, and with the artistic eye um, because you can get rid of the fat, but it really does take an artist to make it look good. Okay, so irregularities are something that can occur with liposuction. And um, here's, here's the thing. Some people um, say that lipos if you get liposuction, the fat's going to go somewhere else. So that's a common misconception, which um, it's a misconception, but there's a reason why people think that. It's because when, you, when we remove the fat from one area in your body, the fat in that area is not going to come back um, any remaining fat can get larger if you gain weight, but more, um, more commonly what will happen is that if you gain weight, the fat that we did not remove will get bigger because you'll get fat. You just won't get fat as fat in the areas where you had the liposuction. So it actually looks like the fat went from the areas that we treated to the areas that were not treated. But if you maintain your weight or lose some more weight, you're not going to get fat in other places. But if you gain weight, you're going to get fat in the areas where you have fat. So that's why it seems like it's moving. So how do we prepare for the liposuction? So First of all, as we mentioned, you want to get yourself to your best possible weight because the less fat you have, the easier it's going to be for us to remove and the more fat we'll be able to get out because it's going to be more condensed fat. So you, you want to you know, get down to a weight where you're going to be comfortable. Um, you don't have to like, you know, get so skinny that you don't need the liposuction. In that case, good for you. <laughs> you don't have to get liposuction. Um, but you do want to get down to a good healthy weight. And um, if you're thinking about doing high def lipo, we need you to get down to a healthy weight. Actually, for women, you need to be have a BMI of under 30 and for men it needs to be under 32 to get high def lipo. You need to get blood work and medical clearance if you need it and we need to do this at least two weeks before the procedure 
you also want to purchase your compression garments and you want to do it at least a week before and try it on so that you have time to return it if it doesn't fit. And make sure that you've read all your consents and sign them prior to your surgery. I know I went over a lot of these things here in this video, but I want you to go over your consents and read them, okay? Because the reason for that is not to sign away your rights. The reason for that is so that you know what you're getting into and what, you, what to expect so that you're not surprised. So we do want you to read your consents and have them signed before. Don't come in the day of the surgery and start signing the papers because it's going to delay your procedure. And um, if you find out at the last minute that uh, you are not, a, that you had a reason why you shouldn't get the procedure, you don't want to find out at the last minute because um, we have staff and everybody and we've, we've uh, you know, taken the time um, for your surgery. We blocked it off so you, you won't get your deposit back if you, we find out at the last minute that you're not a candidate. So that's, that's another reason why we want you to read and sign your consents prior to surgery. Okay? Drink plenty of fluids and be well hydrated. The more hydrated you are, the better your recovery is going to be. Okay. If you are on blood thinners like aspirin, ibuprofen, fish oil, turmeric, ginkgo biloba, vitamin E, you want to be off of them one week prior to your procedure, unless it's something that your doctor um, prescribe for you and if you your doctor pr puts you on blood thinners we need to know about them and the reason why you're on the blood thinners because that may disqualify you for from getting this procedure but if you're for example just taking a baby aspirin as a health precaution then um, then you can stop that a week before to minimize your risk of bruising and bleeding um, some of the things you want to get is you want to purchase some gauze and some tape, um, but you will get a significant amount of leakage of the fluid for the first 24 to 48 hours. So you might even want to get some maxi pads or even diapers to help absorb the fluid from you that's going to leak out of your body. We typically don't put any drains in your body, um, but you will still leak the fluid and um, you may want to get uh, uh, get some towels extra towels or or even some plastic uh, mattress covers to put over your mattress so you don't leak through and soil your mattress and um, you want to <coughs> you don't want to have pets sleeping on your bed um, while you're recovering um, and that's just common sense. Start your antibiotics the day before your procedure. So the morning before you start your antibiotics and take them as prescribed. You want to take your morning dose um, the day of the procedure and then you're going to continue it afterwards. Shave your private areas the night before because depending on um, on what, uh, where we, we make the access points, um, we may need to enter it from, and we typically want to enter it in an area where that's not going to be visible um, because uh, even though the lines are small, some people will, will get visible little marks where we go in. Um, and, we won't, and we try to do it in areas where it's not visible. Um, Shower with an antibiotic wash the night before or the morning of your procedure. Hibic cleanse uh, can be purchased on Amazon, uh, but you do want to avoid getting that in your eyes. Arrange to have somebody drive you to and from your appointment. 
and you need to have a responsible adult stay with you the night of the procedure. This is something that is, uh, is required legally if you're having this type of procedure. Take all your prescription medications the night before and the morning of your procedure and you can eat a light breakfast because we're not putting you under, we're not intubating you, so um, we don't have to worry about you vomiting into your breathing tube or anything like that. And it may be a long day, so uh, but don't you know? Don't stuff yourself. Just eat a eat a light breakfast, and um, before you come to the procedure. And here's what you can expect after or actually, um, here's what you can expect during the treatment. So we're going to give you, uh, we can give you um, anti-anxiety pills and you're going to, we'll prescribe that for you. You're going to bring it to your appointment. You don't need to take it before um, because you can just, uh, we'll have you take it when you come and then while we're preparing, um, we'll give you, It'll give the time for the medication to take effect. We also have nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas. Um, the Pronox that we use is a 50-50 mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen. So it's not going to knock you out, but it's going to make you comfortable. So before we do the procedure, we're going to take your vital signs and your weight and uh, make sure everything is stable in that sense. We will be taking before photos uh, with and without the marking. And depending on the area that we're going to do the liposuction, you may need to remove all of your clothes and under undergarments, so just be prepared for that. And you want to bring a change of underwear as your undergarments will get soiled uh, if, we're, if they're not removed. Sometimes we don't have to have you remove them if we're not working in that area, but it will still get wet. So it's a good idea to bring an extra pair of underwear. You can make a request for your choice of music. We're happy to listen to whatever you like to listen to um, while we're doing the procedure. Just to put you at ease or you can bring your own headset and listen to your own music privately. You can hold on to your phone so that you can play your music or a movie on your phone but the phone does need to be on airplane mode. Okay, You cannot make phone calls while you're getting your procedure. We do allow you to take bathroom breaks during the treatment because you will be awake um, we can stop the treatment and actually allow you to go to the bathroom if you need to um, but we do want to we usually make you um, make sure that you go to the bathroom right before we start the procedure so that we don't have to keep stopping so that you can go to the bathroom but just a reassurance that you are allowed to go to the bathroom if you need to just let us know okay so um, here's uh, in a nutshell what the steps are going to be when we do actually perform the liposuction first we're going to numb you and we're going to numb the entry sites where we're going to make the injection so we'll make uh, we'll make a small injection with a tiny needle um, and then and that area is going to be completely numb and then we'll make a little uh, little opening and it's usually about a centimeter and a half opening that we're going to make in strategic areas where we're going to insert the cannulas. So once we make the openings we're going to infuse numbing fluid using a blunt cannula which is a tube. Um, it, it's actually like a big needle but it's blunt. It's not sharp at the end so that it's, it's not, you don't feel pain, um, but you may feel a little bit of, uh, yeah, you may feel some sharp sensation as we're putting the numbing fluid in. But once the numbing fluid in, is in, 
um, you're going to be numb in that area. And to make sure that you're nice and numb, we're going to use an acoustic wave device, basically a shock wave that's going to be applied over the skin and it's going to distribute that anesthesia uh, throughout, evenly throughout the area where we're going to be doing the procedure so that you won't have pockets where the numbing didn't take. And the acoustic wave also helps to prep the fat and make it come out easier. And, you know, after the acoustic wave, if we're planning on doing any fat transfer to the face, um, we like to remove that fat manually. And we use a, a manual syringe to remove the fat that we're going to use on your face because that fat is very delicate on your face and we, um, we want to make sure that we have the highest quality fat. So then after that, we're going to use the Vaser ultrasound probe. And this is basically a solid probe that goes in and, and the probe vibrates and breaks up the fat into uh, basically into a liquid, but the fat cells are actually intact. This does not burn or break up the fat so that this fat can actually be used for transferring to the butt or the breasts or other areas of the body. The, uh, the vaser is uh, going to make the fat much easier to come out and it's also used to sculpt the body even before we start sucking it out. So once you're vasered, we're going to use the suction cannula and because the uh, fat is now pretty much liquefied, we can use, this, use smaller suction cannulas to remove the fat. And we do that by um, moving the cannula in a back and forth motion and uh, we can actually use our power assisted micro air device to, um, to accelerate this process and also further sculpt the body with the um, power assisted device. If skin laxity is a concern, after we remove the fat, we're going to re use the Renuvion skin tightening to tighten the skin from the inside. Excess fat is removed after the Renuvion treatment. So after we do the skin tightening, we'll put a small cannula in and remove some more fat. Okay, And then after that is all done, we're going to use the acoustic wave again and we're and while you're still numb we can use this to actually um, help the lymphatic drainage um, get going so we um, we can use this to help move the fluid a lot of the fluid out of your body and to smooth out the area where we did the liposuction so that this helps to give you a nice smooth result and although we do recommend getting lymphatic massages afterwards. When we use the acoustic wave device, um, the lymphatic massage is not as critical because depending on where you live, it may not be so easy to find somebody who performs this. So after the acoustic wave, we're going to, um, if you are doing any fat transfer to the buttocks or the breasts, we're going to use uh, we're going to do the fat transfer at that point. Um, and if you're going to do any type of... Um, <clears throat> we also use the, uh, um, use the fat to treat um, arthritic knees and things like that. So if that's something that um, you want to have done, you can talk to us beforehand so that we can do that at this point as well. And then we're going to dress the wounds and we're going to use either big dressings or even diapers or maxi pads because you will have, uh, you will continue to drain for 24, 48 hours. And then we're going to put your compression garments over the dressing to keep everything nice and tight. And then, um, 
and that's pretty much it. And we're going to send you home. Um, we're going to call you a ride. We're going to make sure that you're, you know, able to walk and ambulating. And you're actually going to be walking out of the office uh, after your procedure because you were not put under general anesthesia. You should be able to walk home. We do not want you to drive. In fact, you cannot drive. You must have somebody come and pick you up. Please arrange for someone to pick you up and a, and a responsible adult to stay with you overnight. So, finally, home care. When you go home, again, you're going to need someone to help you, okay? You're going to have a lot of drainage. The first night is going to be messy. The dressing will need to be changed because there's going to be a lot of drainage of fluid. And um, most of the fluid is actually the numbing fluid that's going to keep coming out. Even though we suck most of it out, it's going to still um, leak out. And it's going to look kind of bloody because even a drop of blood... It, you know, if you get a drop of blood in the toilet, the whole toilet bowl turns red. Um, it's the same concept. Even though there's not a lot of bleeding, um, the, any amount of blood mixed in with the fluid will look red and it's going to look like you're bleeding, but you're not. Um, if it's like dark red or if it's like pulsating, um, then you need to be concerned. But the... Um, the pink fluid that comes out is mostly the numbing fluid. Okay, so you're going to continue to take your antibiotics until they're finished. Take it as directed. You may shower the next day, but no baths. Okay, no hot tubs, no swimming until the wounds are closed. And usually it takes about a week, but we're going to be, be checking on you. And um, so please don't jump in the hot tub until we give you the clearance, okay? And you are going to be sore. So for about a week, you're going to be pretty sore. But every day, you're going to get better. Most people are going to be fine with some extra strength Tylenol. You can take two extra strength Tylenol every four to six hours for the first 48 hours. Some people might need stronger pain medications the first night, but most people are fine with the Tylenol. And, um, and some people um, are not able to take stronger pain medications, so, um, so most people are okay with just the Tylenol. Because we use the acoustic wave device, your, uh, the lymphatic massage is not critical, but we do recommend it if you have a therapist who can do it for you. Swelling is expected and will be present for weeks after the treatment. So don't be, don't be surprised if you're still swollen weeks after the procedure. The final results are going to be seen after six months, okay? That's six months. So if, um, if you don't feel like you got the results that you wanted, Please just be patient and wait at least six months for the final results, okay? Especially the skin tightening can take a long time. Bruising is expected. Bruises may appear in areas far below the treated area due to gravity because gravity is going to pull it down. You are going to be up and about right away. So gravity is just going to pull all the bruising down. So you're going to see bruising down your legs and even down to your ankles. And you're going to even, um, especially you're going to see bruising in your genitalia. So women in your labia and men in your scrotum, you're going to get some swelling and bruising because that's kind of where the bruises are going to gravitate through. So don't be alarmed if that occurs. That is something that's expected and it will go away. And um, you're going to want to wear your garments. Um, for the first two weeks, you're going to wear it all the time except when you wash them. 
Okay, so you might also, you might even want to get a second pair so you can wear them as much as possible. The more you wear your garment, the better your final results are going to be. After two weeks, you can cut down the garment time to at least 12 hours a day. Okay, but for the best results, you want to wear your garments for six months. So, um, so that is, you know, something that people do complain about, but most people get used to the garment and actually feel that the garment makes them feel more comfortable. So expect to wear your garment for six months if you, if you want great results. Finally, let's talk about some complications that it can occur. Okay, as we talked about, infections can occur with any invasive procedure. And between the antibiotics and the sterile techniques that we use, the infection um, is, infections are very rare, but it can occur. So the things to look out for are things like fever, pain, swelling and redness, and pus. These can all be signs of an infection. So some, some pain and redness and swelling are expected, but if you're, expect, if you're experiencing more swelling or more redness in, in a particular area, or if you're just not sure, um, you should call us. And fever, any fever above 100 degrees Fahrenheit is not normal, so call us immediately if you have any fever. Okay. The other thing to be concerned about is lidocaine toxicity. Now, when we do these procedures under local anesthesia, it puts us in a whole different category of safety. It's so much safer than general anesthesia because you generally don't have to worry about things like blood clots and anesthesia reaction or just not waking up from anesthesia, that kind of stuff. But lidocaine toxicity is something that we need to be aware of because even though we stay well within the safety limits of how much lidocaine that we can use, we need to be aware of the symptoms of lidocaine toxicity. And th that could occur even 12 hours after the procedure. So some of the things to look out for are confusion, lethargy, lightheadedness, numbness, tingling around the mouth, palpitations or irregular heart rhythm, a metallic taste in your mouth, any chest pain, shortness of breath, fainting or seizures. Uh, these are not normal and you should call us immediately um, or you should have somebody bring you to the emergency room. Um, but do call us first and uh, if um, if the symptoms are, are significant, um, the safest thing to do is to bring them to the emergency room uh, or have somebody bring you to the emergency room um, so that you can be observed because um, you don't want to have a, have a seizure there in the hospital. That's something that can be um, treated very easily. Um, but if, there's, uh, if you're alone, um, it could be a problem and that's another reason why we want you to have an, a responsible adult with you for the first night. Okay, Seromas and hematomas, as we mentioned before, are collections of fluid or blood under the skin. These are very rare, but if they occur, most of the time we can e remove it easily with a needle. Um, you may need to have this done multiple times uh, because they can reaccumulate and sometimes surgery may be, need, be necessary to drain them. Burns and skin necrosis are possible with any laser devices because they create heat. And um, we I like to use the devices, the safest devices possible, but these are things to be aware of. Hyperpigmentation and scarring can occur at the entry sites. That's the, why we like to, um, even though most of the times these entry sites become invisible after a while, um, we, we try to make them in areas where they're not visible, such as 
under the bikini line, under arms, in the belly button. Um, but sometimes we do have to make some um, entry sites to get to areas that are difficult to get to. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Lumpiness of the skin, irregularities, and just results that you're not happy with are all possible with any invasive or non-invasive treatment. So, serious complications are fortunately pretty rare with outpatient liposuction, um, but we do not, um, but if you don't have health insurance, um, we just recommend that you don't get this treatment because it is a cosmetic treatment. It's not a medically necessary treatment. And um, if you do end up having any kind of complications, sometimes it will require hospitalization and you're going to be responsible for the hospital bills. So please um, consider not having this treatment if you don't have health insurance. And that is the end of this presentation. I'm Dr. William Song from Omni Aesthetics. I know that's a lot of information, so you might want to go back and review it again. And um, it's still not uh, uh, complete. There may be things that uh, um, have been left out. So please do go over your consent forms read them carefully, call us if you have any questions, and we look forward to seeing you soon, and, and we look forward to helping you get some fantastic results on your liposuction or your non-invasive body contouring treatment. This is Dr. Song, and thank you very much. We'll see you soon.